Hey guys, this is Tyler here. It is October 10th and I'm just going to talk to everyone why MGTOW is taking off in the country of Canada. Canada is an interesting country. It has a lot of parallels to America and I often see it as kind of a miniature version of USA without the right to own a gun. And it's very interesting how many of the most prolific MGTOW people have actually came from Canada. It's just insane when, when we think of some of the bigger guys like Sandman that have these huge MGTOW followings and I think very much grew this philosophy in the world. Of course in their countries, in North America and then worldwide. And, and these guys basically, they grew the philosophy in many other countries or they at least contributed to growing the philosophy. Now Canada of course has many of the same draconian policies that USA has. They have no fault divorce laws, they have strict laws with child support and child custody laws and all these sort of matters they pretty much take the same stance as america does or even worse in some cases they um for example with domestic partnerships if people have lived in the same household for so long it's often consistently in the favor of a woman if the couple separates and often even in these cases the guy will have to pay some kind of alimony or even child support in the case of separation so it's turned into a very challenging place for an average man to have a relationship and absolutely to be married nowadays in canada or any long-term relationship for that matter canada of course has had an, a history that's stretched out for many years and one of the things about Canada is it's always leaned more on the liberal side, socially speaking. They've always had this more progressive viewpoint on all aspects of life. And this is certainly the case when we look at relationships and marriage and divorce courts. They've always been on the more progressive side. In Canada, it's so much so, in fact, how gender standards are that it actually extends to many other facets of life. If we looked at the houses, the public health system of Canada, it very much has, there's certainly a difference in how they treat men and women, cases of health. If anyone knows anything about the health system of Canada, it's nationalized, it's, it's a government run system. So yes, most people are guaranteed a minimum level of health care, but often for more advanced care, it, it becomes very subpar. And there's been many cases of Canadians having to travel to USA to other countries to receive certain specialized health care such as people who have cancer and, and need treatment immediately or need certain forms of treatment. Often for certain kinds of transplants people are put on these long waiting lists that are often even longer than waiting lists in USA for a transplant. Th these people often may, may not receive the transplant if they don't go elsewhere. So it's turned into a very gender-based system in Canada at this point. And this is of course the case with relationships and marriages. To be in a relationship in Canada often is a big sacrifice for a guy. They often put their life, their economic security, potentially if they have children, many other things of their life on the line going into marriage. It's, it's very risky or even as I said long-term partnerships. Courts can still cause major problems for Canadian men and for this reason along with that very high standards that Canadian women have for men in dating in relationships Many men are just simply not in the dating scene. They've gone MGTOW. They've simply have decided that it's not for them. Whether it's attainable or not, some guys elect to go this way because they're not interested. Other guys have no choice. They don't have any options, so they go by default. This is more of the incel category. There's been many, many men now in Canada that simply, they're not on the dating market anymore they've walked away from it. Some of these guys eventually may move somewhere else, live in a different country. Some remain in Canada, but just simply don't pursue relationships and others were possibly married and are divorced and have no interest in a long-term relationship anymore. This is really the state of Canada at this point. I had a friend from Canada many years ago when I lived in Chile, and he would even tell me that the state of Canada for relationships was worse than America. He had said that in some cities in USA would look really good compared to the overall scene in all the provinces of Canada. 
where it, it, it's a very difficult system for the average guy. Even if we looked at cases of these more famous people or people with more status, there's been cases like the Toronto Maple Leaf hockey players that were not married, single, and they had even complained about the challenge of dating in Toronto. They, uh, these are guys that are making huge salaries. They're, they have a lot of status. Many people know who they are. Ice hockey players are like the most popular athletes in Canada. And, and these guys actually would have challenges with dating. This just shows you how difficult it is and just how high the standards are in Canada. It's absolutely out of control. This is why many guys have just simply decided to walk away from the scene, just move away, whether it's going to a foreign country or it's to remain in Canada and, and simply not today. Some guys may attempt to bring someone back from a foreign country to live there. There's different scenarios here. But one thing is for certain that it, it's a very challenging dating climate in Canada and, and it, it will likely just continue to go this way as long as the legal system and laws are skewed in favor of females it will probably just progress and become worse and worse over time. There's other issues, of course, that contribute to this issue. How Canada is set up, it's very similar to a place like USA or Western Europe, where women often have priority employment opportunities, government positions often. They get priority for private sector the same way. They have strict quotas for hiring. Like in America, they have to have so many women in positions their average income has, has steadily risen in the past 30 years, like you see in USA. So they don't really need a man for their, their survival, for their day-to-day -day being. They pretty much know they have access to the same jobs men do and probably actually more opportunities than men. It, it's made them have, as I stated before, very, very high standards that are not attainable for most guys. It, of course, it's very unfair, but this is just how the system has evolved. Canada has put in place many of these liberal politicians in, in many seats of power, whether it's on a national level or on a provincial level. That many other leaders are, of course, liberal. And these guys obviously represent the people who vote for them and then just continue pushing these causes. They have obviously a lot of self-interest here and just wish to maintain their position and power. I think also due to the immigration climate of Canada, it's very pro-immigration, especially for people from the third world. And many of these people that have came in from the third world in the past 15 to 20 years tend to vote more for these liberal political people. These kind of people generally support pro-female causes, which then of course um, ends up hurting men. But these immigrants, of course, they are only concerned about their bottom line, not necessarily thinking about these, the whole situation of Canada and th these liberal political people end up remaining in office or new ones get elected that replace them and just continue pushing more of these causes. The tax system is, is also very high, like in USA and Canada. Their um, income taxes, proper, property taxes, income taxes, many other taxes that are in the picture. And of course these tax systems are, are there for a reason. And these taxes just continue to go up. You also see the, the housing market is getting super, super expensive in the big cities of Canada. Like for even a decent sized house I've heard in Toronto or outside Toronto, you're going to have to pay at least a million and a half US dollars for just like a more average house. So imagine for whether it's a bigger house or smaller house, you're going to have to have a lot of resources and the this housing market this bubble has has been created by many banks but it's very inflated the the value of the housing market is very inflated so many men don't want to or cannot buy a home a house because they may not be able to afford it or they don't want to buy pay the property taxes each year of course many women want a guy who has a home a nice house but because many of these guys can't even afford to buy a house in the first place there's certainly not going to be attracting many women into their life. Canada's system is, it's very circular as in most countries in terms of how finan financial resources affect the climate of relationships and it, it ends up becoming very intertwined. This will likely just continue the, these policies in Canada, which then will just further the problems for dating for men who may want to pursue a relationship or who don't want to 
and are unable to marry. It, it will likely just continue to get worse as long as the cycle continues. Only if the cycle comes to a pause or stops, perhaps it can be reversed a bit. We looked at Jordan Peterson, who had spoken about problems of Canada. A few years ago, he became very well known because Canada was going to put in, in place a policy where all public sector employees who work for a Canadian government, prof many professors are in this category in Canada, would be unable to use pronouns. They, they were forced to use gender neutral pronouns when referring to men and women. Jordan Peterson took this stance and, and said just how crazy this was and was totally against it. And that's kind of what put Jordan Peterson on the radar in Canada and he became very well known worldwide. Jordan Peterson, keep in mind, I don't think he was even like conservative. This just puts in perspective how bad it is there that a guy who's probably at most maybe moderate it would be vehemently opposed to this kind of policy. This just shows the state of where Canada is today. It's unlikely it will get any better in the near future. With this, of course, the MGTOW philosophy will just continue to grow in Canada as it has been. Canada was one of the major first players in, in the MGTOW philosophy. I think Canada will continue to reign as one of the leading countries of the MGTOW philosophy in the future. More and more men will just continue to go this way as they realize there's not much there for them in Canada regarding relationships and just realize MGTOWism will just ensure a happier and more fulfilling life. I look forward to everyone's feedback in this video. Please comment below and thank you.